The views and opinions expressed on this show do not reflect that of the staff and management of WNOV and W293CX 106.5 FM Courier Communications Milwaukee, but are the sole comments of the host and guest of this particular show. The views and opinions expressed in this program do not reflect those of Wisconsin Voices. The views and opinions expressed by hosts and guests are their own, and their appearance on the program do not imply any endorsement or representation by Wisconsin Voices. Thank you for listening to Be a Voice with Wisconsin Voices. Be a voice. 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 Visit WisconsinVoices.org. Visit WisconsinVoices.org. Visit WisconsinVoices.org. And learn more on how to be a voice with Wisconsin Voices. We got a caller already. We're going to take a caller right away, and then we're going to get into business. Caller, you are on the air. How y'all beautiful souls doing? I had to call because we were sitting here at the kitchen table just laughing at y'all. We ribbing on y'all because a lot of y'all got faces. For radio now y'all done turning y'all talking about fashion and dress and wanting to look at shoes this is radio look at y'all look at y'all um uh, but if you but if you knew that we were live streaming if you knew we were live streaming you would be able to see it go on the facebook page it's live stream so you could see what's going on and yeah. i definitely have a face for tv Debo, you said they got a YouTube, huh? Yeah, we we actually simultaneously stream YouTube as well as Facebook. So nice. Call her, you call coming her, with us. Call her, call her, get with the times. That's all. Right. <laughs> I like that. Get with the times. Get with the times. A60WNOV, right. You got to go to Facebook, A60WNOV, and you can simultaneously, you can watch it on uh, the uh, Facebook and, you know, of course, tune in on the uh, radio. Thank you. And you can connect on our website, wisconsinvoices.org. Let's get down to business. We are continuing our series talking to candidates. We have a candidate, and I'm going to do the same thing. Candidate, introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, my name is Brandon Williford. I am uh, currently running for Milwaukee County Supervisor on the far northwest side of Milwaukee. So uh, what district is that? It's uh, it's the supervisor district eighteen. So we had you on before, and you had a primary, and obviously you came out. That was a close one, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was pretty close. I think it was really close. Yeah. So what that means is, people in the district eighteen, if it's that close, and you just knew somebody was going to win, or you knew somebody's going to take it, you better go out there and vote because it might be close again. He has an opponent. He's working. His opponent will be on next week. Um, we don't say opponent's names. We try not to because we don't want to get nobody. If you all know, if they ain't did their job, then they ain't do your job. So how's it been going on the campaign trail? Yeah, uh, it's been going really good. You know, I think the most uh, exciting thing is being able to uh, knock doors and talk to people at the doors and, and, and get the issues that matters most to them. Um, and, and being at the door is so personal and it's so uh, it's a, a great connection that's being able to be made. And, you know, so I really appreciate it. It's probably the, the best thing that comes out of this campaign. So what have you heard differently than you did in the primary about doors? I mean, like what? So a lot of things have happened. What is the one thing that they're talking about on the doors right now? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that, you know, folks are talking about um, on the doors not just in my district, I'm assuming throughout Milwaukee County is the, the reckless driving and um, you know, just the the potholes and, and the bumpy roads in the streets too. So um it's really a big focus on the streets and um yeah. Well, some of those are city and some of them are county. So I guess I could see them talking to you about county roads because some of them are city, remember, some of them are city, some of them are county. Um what else are you looking forward to do? If you win, I mean, let's say even though, you you know, you have to work with, you know, 17 other people. Um, if you had your to do list of the first 100 days, what would you try to accomplish? Yeah, uh, the, the biggest thing that I want to do is uh, see a senior center uh, get put onto the far northwest side. There's currently not 
uh, any senior centers on that side of town. And I think it's really important that we uh, get a facility over there because it increased the health outcomes of seniors in the, in the area. Um, and then I also just want to see us invest in our county parks and uh, make sure we have like bas- basketball courts and, um, you know, the pickleballs and all that stuff. So people, uh, you know, can just have something to do at the end of the day. I don't know what pickleball is. Yeah, that's one of the ones we were speaking earlier about some of the sports <laughs> that we had at Nicolay. That was another one, pickleball, ultimate frisbee. So, yes, it's pretty much like a slower he's version a, of tennis. He's a graduate of Nicolay High School, people. <laughs> Where did you graduate from? Yeah, uh, I graduated from uh, uh, John Marshall High School. Um, and I ended up getting my degree from uh, University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee in uh, political science, uh, philosophy, pre-law. I forgot what my husband says. He he says he's a graduate of, um, uh, it, he's from MPS, but he's like people that are superior or something. He uses the MPS for people's superiority or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, but, but the MPS, we went to Riverside or something? No, he went to um, Hamilton. Oh, Hamilton. Okay. I know. It's, it's, the Vukovich <laughs> went to Hamilton and the Gray went to Shorewood. That's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> We got some issues going on in the Vukovic family. Um, what did you, I know I really want to go back to something that you said before. Why did you run? Because I think every, even though we interviewed you before, um, why did you run? Yeah. Um, so for me, on the far north west side, I was born and raised uh, there. Um, you know, and all my family is there. All my friends are there. And I'm really happy to call that side of town my home. And, um, you know, uh, for me, I, I believe that I understand the issues, uh, not just for folks on, on that side of town, but throughout Milwaukee County, uh, based on my experience being here. And, um, you know, not every single issue, but but a majority of issues that people face throughout the county. and uh, The other issues I'm, I'm meeting you at the door to find out, right? Uh, but uh, through that, though, I believe that by working with the people in my community, I can uh, provide some meaningful changes uh, to the to the issues that they face. 414-444-5250, if you have a question. Um, the, uh, there's a lot of um, talk among um, people about what the county spends their money on. And I know you don't, you know, you may not have gotten deep dived into it, but um, you were talking how you would like them to reallocate money to the the parks and maybe a senior citizen. Um, anything else that you find that they need to reallocate money and or something that you think is a waste of money that the the county is. It, it, I don't like to say waste because there's always somebody who uses that money, but they think you think that it should it could go to a different source. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's a, that's a great question. And, uh, for me, I believe that we, it's important then, uh, for all the supervisors to be very detailed and examined in the budget. Um, just because that's the, that's the hardest part of the job. So, uh, you know, I would like to see us invest more into the Milwaukee County transit system. Um, you know, I know, uh, the folks at on the county and and in, in the county executive office have been putting together uh, some some nice proposals to to get past. And uh, we also just expanded the Connect um, Transit line. Uh, but I, I do want to see us continue to expand transportation throughout the county, um, just because it's, it's a great opportunity for folks to have more access to jobs. There is a, um, I'm not in Milwaukee, so I, I, it's a race for our mayor. And one of the candidates said that he he didn't believe that we should put money into the transit system. He doesn't use it. Most of the people don't use it. And I'm like, dude, but that's because we're privileged enough to have a car. There are so many people who need to get to these jobs that we can get in our car and drive outside of Milwaukee County or on the other side of Milwaukee County where you live. And transit is extremely important. If you, Milwaukee is not small. You can't just walk down the street and get to the other side, you know, in a half hour. It, it's not small. So having that transportation is is definitely uh, um, important. There is also, 
I know they're working on these trails. And one of the things that I see in the suburbs that people talk about the, the Milwaukee, the trails and the bike trails, but I think it needs to be a connection within the city too. city people ride bikes, city people, you know, um, you know, want to walk those, those quiet trails. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, no, I think that is, uh, you know, a very great point. And for me, I also want to see us. So they call it the Emerald Necklace and it's actually not complete all the way, but it's the Oak Leaf Trail. Right. And it, it you know, it goes across uh, all the county parks. You can really walk uh, through the trail from the north part of the county all the way down to the south part of the county. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a long trail. Um, but for, for me, those, those activities, I'm an avid hiker. Um, so I think that it is important that we continue to expand our trail system, um, get more bike, bike trails and, uh, have people be more active up in the, the, the more nature aspects that we have in our county. So. Well, I just, um, I know you've been working hard and when I know a couple of times you thought long and hard about running in this race. You you decided you you say, like, no, I'm not going to do it. Then I said that yeah, you really wanted to make sure um, you had told me you really wanted to make sure that this was the right spot for you and what you thought you could achieve being here. You could have picked assembly, um, any other one. Why did you pick a. Uh, yeah, uh, so for for my reason on the county is, you know, it's just uh, I have a, a very large passion for our county parks. Um, so with the the park system is kind of like how I, I kind of got into the politics, um, you know, working with, you know, uh, some of the senators in our in our uh, state Senate um, who had a, a strong passion for the parks. So it kind of it kind of led me there that way and then also have a, a passion for our youth as well and just want to see our youth have strong opportunities and um you know over time a lot of our our parks kind of got um a lot of the parks in the in the city and, and throughout the county as as kind of you know dwindled and as far as the capacity for it to take on the um our teens and, and young children and you know i just want to see uh, those things come back so our, our kids can have something to do at the end of the day. Hey, right, we got a caller. Caller, go ahead. Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. good morning. good morning. Yes, well, good morning, Mr. Mika, and good morning, um, Mr. Candidate. Is he there? Good morning. Good morning. All right, well, thank you. Good morning, then. Let's, let, 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 let's get the grits out the throat, man. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I do want some grits, by the way. <laughs> Can't, can't, can't get stuck now, brother, on a Friday, man. Everything going on. Let's, let's go. Let's get it. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, well, good morning. Yeah, Tyrone W. You, you're speaking with Mr. Tyrone W. The one and only. Hey, Tyrone. How you doing? Yeah. Blessed, grateful, grateful. Thank you, Lord. Thanks for asking. And I just wanted to say why I'm here. Um, a blessed, uh, wonderful, holy week. Um, Palm Sunday, Good Friday, and resurrecting Easter Sunday to all. It's in the sound of my voice. God bless me. Bless you well to all. Be be kind and generous to all everyone. You know, let's 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 get with it and get what the what what, what the father has for us as far as pro progressing and moving forward. Okay, uh, very very quick. You know, I I yes, we do need the transportation. I'm 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 between and be, 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 be buffled. I mean, I know this is probably beyond your uh your, your pay grade and your uh. Uh, uh, your, your, uh, your, your professionalism as far as what you could do about it, but the young man that was killed over a transfer. I mean, come on, give me a break. I mean, I was buying bus passes and tickets because instead of giving the people the tick, uh, the, the money, you know, so they could buy whatever tobacco, I'm not going to support your, your smoking habit or your drinking your, you know, your shot of food. You got to get that on your own there. I would give them the t two tickets or whatever to get where they were going. I, I'm trying to see here, why do they have to be greedy with the, transit stuff there as far as you know if something's working why why mess with it why 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 mess with it? why break it you know so the bus passes and the tickets were working as opposed to you know said the young man on brown there had to lose his life behind a transfer come on give me a break so now uh I, I i would love to see transit do well there but i don't know 
everybody doesn't want the the, the, the whatever you call it, the, the, the e card and all this other stuff. Putting them up, you know, I, they want something that's going to be that they've got in their hands. There, now, you can do away with the transfers, but there's ways you can um, you can punch the thing there. I know in Detroit there they had a little thing there that punched out circles there. So there's ways you can do it there without the transfer, but you know, you can still make it feasible. So if we can come up with something where, uh, not saying you, but some of the greedy people, you know, I don't know if it's Abley or whoever there, but somebody, somebody, somebody BS enough and somebody got their hand in the cookie jar being too greedy. So I'll let you go with that, but we'll talk soon. Be blessed. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that, Tyrone. I really do. Um, and I definitely understand too with the uh, with the transfers and and the the upgrade in technology. I, I think um, it kind of makes it a little bit more tough for our seniors to to use our buses as well. And um, so I, I do want to see us kind of figure out some way to um, improve the technology to make it more accessible so everybody can ride our buses. So. <laughs> Catch Wisconsin Voices, Pia Voice Radio, every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at 11 a.m. as we focus on community partnerships, voter education, and long-term collective impact for all Wisconsinites. You're listening to Wisconsin Voices, BA Voice Radio. Follow us at BAWI Voice and learn more at wisconsinvoices.org. Wisconsin Voices, three pillars, protecting democracy, teaching advocacy, building community. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Marisa Bel Cabrera. I am a candidate for Milwaukee County Circuit Court Judge Branch 43, and I'm happy to be here today to introduce myself and tell folks a little bit more about me and why I'm running. Okay, how do you do it? Marisa Bel Cabrera. Well, I am Puerto Rican, so it, it's more natural for me, but Marisa Bel Cabrera is how you would say it properly. Uh, for folks who don't speak Spanish, I tend to give them an English version, which is uh, Marissa Bell Cabrera. I, uh, her aunt, who is a wonderful friend of mine, she kept calling me <laughs> Linda. And she was like, hi, Linda, how are you? It's so good to see you. So I thought, you know, she's a little bit older. So I thought she was just forgetting my name. No offense. I was like, hey, how you doing? Who was she really saying? It's Lean Bad. That's beautiful. She yeah, they hi, beautiful. Hey, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I kept on. She was calling me Linda. So um, I'm going to ask you, which is, this is your first time here. I'm going to ask you the question. What does what is the job of a circuit court judge? So our circuit courts are courts of general jurisdiction, which basically mean um, that they it isn't one specific area, one type of case that they accept. Um, they accept all cases at the first instance. They're trial courts, so it's the first time that the cases will be heard. Um, they basically, the judges, what they do is hear testimony and evidence from all the parties involved when they have a dispute, and they help them um, try to uh, achieve a peaceful resolution. And um, they also are responsible for upholding our rights and freedoms. Um. Why did you decide to run? Uh, well, there's a few reasons. Uh, one of them being that um, I have a very deep commitment to public service. Uh, uh, one of my family's core values, as you know, my aunt has been very involved in many things in the in civil rights and, and um, you know, creating self determination for our communities. And so it was always a thing that uh, we it was emphasized in our family that. Uh, Number one, if you ever if fortunate enough to do well in on life or do better, that it is your responsibility to help others in the community do the same. But also anything, any knowledge, experience and, and, and skills that you have gained over the years, you, you, you should be using those to help improve your community. So that's one reason. The other reason would be that um, I want to help to uh, build back confidence in our judicial system. I believe a lot of folks out there have become disillusioned in, in, in how there's so many, in particular in Wisconsin, specifically where the outcomes are, um, you know, this very disparate impact on our um, minority communities when it comes to the, diff the data that's out there for mass incarceration and um, many other things that are social uh, ills and issues in our community. It seems to impact us um at a higher rate. And so that's something as far as uh, the, the judicial system, I would like to help build back confidence in. And to do that, 
You it's, have to be a judge. <laughs> the other reason that I'm running is to ensure that due process and equal protection of the law actually means something. There, Yeah, I've heard many times where people say, uh, like, oh, African-American versus the white, same exact crime. The penalties are harsher on the African-American or the person of color. Um, so you're trying to say that you're trying to make sure that there's due process that Right. That that no matter what your ethnic background is, your income bracket or the people who you know are that um, the if you're similarly situated to uh, anybody else that's going through the system, that you're going to have a similar outcome and that the 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 outcomes are consistent across the board. Um, What is your so I know, obviously, you're a lawyer, um, uh, you know, but give us a little bit of background of your your educational background and what you've been doing since you've up to when you were now running? Okay. So uh, to become a circuit court judge, you need to have five years practicing as a lawyer. I have 18 um, practicing in the areas of immigration rights, criminal defense, and family law. Um, I also am serving in my third term in the state assembly where I advocated for Legislation that's pro-choice, pro-worker, pro-equality to make sure everybody has an equal opportunity to thrive in Wisconsin. And um, I also previously served on Milwaukee's Fire and Police Commission for six years where we set public safety policy and um, I presided over uh, employee appeal hearings. So you, you kind of got a, a little bit of taste of public service. Yes. It, like I said, it's very important to me. I I. I I'm single. I have no children, so I want to make sure this dollar goes somewhere and it gets you put it to good use. <laughs> what well, is that a hint that you want to get yeah. out there like that? No, I'm just kidding. No. Uh, but yeah, I do. I have. Uh, I, I not only um, just have a, a diversity in areas of law that I practice, but as you can see, I have a diversity in professional background. I've been an attorney. I've been a legislator. I've been a fire and police commissioner. It looks like we have a caller, um, 414-444-5250. If you have a question, go ahead, caller. Yes, ma'am. It is I again. Uh, good morning. <laughs> you just like us, don't you? Uh, indeed, I do. Well, actually, I like you and I love you. I mean, I'm part of the community you are uh, out to, so yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get it right right along with you. Tyrone W. speaking, Ms. Marissa. I, <laughs> good morning. Good morning. I received your... Madeline, thank you very much. And I, 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 I uh, not going to suck all the year off the shoulder, but I appreciate what I've read there. And um, uh, I, I will see, you know, so far, so good. I mean, uh, I don't know if you're unopposed or what they're on the ballot there, but as it stands right now, it appears that, yes, I am truly voting for you. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. And, um, uh, you know, keep doing what the best you're doing to uh, uh, uplift the community and all that. And plus, you're good looking as well. So, oh. Thank you. <laughs> oh, now he got the tech, not, or he wasn't the caller, but they have the technology, right? So they can see. And, 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 and a wonderful, uh, a wonderful Resurrection Sunday, Holy Week, and all to you and your family. Uh, it, it looks like I'm voting for you, so keep up what you're doing, and we'll see what happens once you're elected and moving forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. you have a wonderful day. Um, we got, we're going to go into one more caller real quick. Caller, go ahead. Good morning, and thank you for taking my call. I know there's another person running against uh, your guest on the show. And uh, I hope one day next week she's going to be on the show so that you can hear from her as well. Um, let me just exp- um I have sent emails and calls to every candidate that was on the ballot. If she has not responded, I, I mean, he or she, because I don't even remember what it is. But they have to respond, and I have been putting people on. And if they can come on, I have maybe one or two slots left um, because people, I sent it out on May, uh, March 2nd. So anything that we have put out there, uh, we have responded to everybody who, so if they're not here, it's because they didn't respond. I just wanted to clear that up. It's not that I'm handpicking people to come on or anything. I know you're not, and I appreciate what you do. And I, uh, both of these ladies have been in the community. I've seen them both on several different occasions. And uh, like I said, when you uh, do early voting and you, you do these things, sometimes you lose out a lot. 
And uh, it's important that people get out here and make that difference because we, this is so critical. If the school board referendum is so critical, I was locked in to saying, yes, I am not a yes anymore because of what I've learned and because of uh, people, I hate when people uh, don't make things plain to people. You shouldn't need a degree to decipher what's being stated. Say what you're about. Because once, once you do that to me, holding with confidence in you, and, and I just don't have time to be bothered with it. Our kids are important like all the other kids in the other community. And when you take money from us, I mean, I just have a, a dumb question. I'm a layman. Now, the schools that, that are out there that are not being used, who is the landlord of them? Is it Milwaukee County? The city. The city of Milwaukee. So yes. as long as schools are on the Milwaukee, on the MPS school uh, debt, I mean, it's under their house, then that debt is with us. Can the schools that are not being used, they're not going to sell them, can they give them back to, can they say, okay, city, take them back? Um, we will answer, listen further, because we have a guest that can probably help us with that a little, answering that question a little bit more. Um, after we talk with uh, Ms. Cabrera, um, okay, yeah. stay tuned because we'll get that question answered by our next guest. Okay, thank you. And, and, and hey, keep doing what you're doing. Keep getting out there talking to people because it's a personal choice and you make the effort to do what you need to do. You will see your reward in the end. Thank, thank you, ma'am. We have another caller. Caller, go ahead. Hi, good morning or good early afternoon. I have a, a question for the candidate. Uh, uh, circuit Court number 43, <clears throat> what type of, is that a specialized court for certain type of cases? And because you've never been a judge or what have you, what makes you believe that you're qualified, besides all the other things I know you've listed, but, you know, what makes you think that you're qualified to do this position? And I'm asking because I want to know, but I'm also going to tell you, I do intend to vote for you also, but I would like to hear uh, what you have to say about that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so Branch 43 currently is a children's court. They handle cases that deal with um, child abuse and neglect, termination of parental rights, um, juvenile and delinquency cases. Uh, but uh, I, as a new judge, I, I, I could possibly be um, re- assigned to a different court, that there's 47 circuit court branches in our Milwaukee County Circuit Court. Each one of them are um, dedicated to a specific subject area. Um, and, and so I, I, I may go to children's court, I may go to a different court, but I would say that I am the only candidate that has actual experience that doing things that judges do. I did serve at the Milwaukee Fire Police Commission for six years, and part of our duties were presiding over appellate uh, employee appeals where we we listened to testimony, we evaluated evidence, and we applied to law to the circumstances. And I'm the only candidate with that sort of background experience. So I do think that I am the most qualified. There is, um, and most um, most people who run for circuit court judges have never been a judge before. Um, or they, So it basically all of them, um, have never been judges before. There is a training pro well, if you are an attorney, you have it, you have to have at least five years, I believe, of um practicing law. And then there is some training that they do um in regards to that. And actually we can talk to our next guest about some of the things that they have to do. But um I'm I'm not gonna say all, but the majority of them have never been a I mean, uh, judges before, unless they like were a judge in the a smaller municipality like um, Shorewood or Glendale or something, and then they moved into Milwaukee and then decided to run. But most of them have never been judges before. It's a, it's kind of an entry level position, right? That is true, and and like that's why it's so important that I do have that experience where I was presiding over hearings. But also, I would have to say too, aside from just the years, the 18 years of experience I have in practicing in different areas of law and my experience in the Fire and Police Commission, um, I would say also that I, I'm, I'm probably one of the people who would uh, relate most to the experiences of the, the, the types of uh, parties that would be before me. Um, my family has 
my my friends and families have all experienced many of the things that the folks who have um, who who would be before me the evictions um, custody battles uh, you know I. I have family members who have been incarcerated for many, many years. And so I understand what the impact on, you know, not just that individual, but their their family as well would be. And so I, I do intend to serve as a uh, judge that's compassionate, that listens to folks, that is respectful uh, and observant of people's rights while applying the law. I don't know if I want to be a judge. That 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 kind of that kind of power. We, this is a very important you know, position because you are deciding if someone is going to lose their freedom or not. Right. Um, and plus, I know there's there's been judges that people have have uh, um, elected in the past that never stepped foot in a courtroom, like never did a trial, never did anything, but they voted them in. So that's why you have to pay attention to the the. Um, the experiences that these these people who are on the ballot and you're voting yeah. for them. And and that's true too because I, I'm actually licensed both here in the state of Florida and the state of I mean the state of Wisconsin and the state of Florida. And I have practiced at the trial level and the appellate level, both in Wisconsin and Florida, as well as at the federal courts as too. So my experience is is very broad. Um, and, and I think that's uh, why I have so much support uh, right, right from the beginning once I find out. Please join Wisconsin Voices every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. We will be focusing on community partnerships, voter education, and long-term collective impact for all Wisconsinites. You're listening to Wisconsin Voices Be A Voice Radio. Follow us at B A W I Voice and learn more at WisconsinVoices.org. The three pillars of Wisconsin Voices are protecting democracy, teaching advocacy, and building community. Learn more about Wisconsin Voices and our partners at WisconsinVoices.org. Stay up to date on our community events page and get involved by visiting our donation page. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Good to be seen. I mean, uh, I, I've been, you know, privileged to work with you on some uh, projects with, with Wisconsin Voices and seeing how you get down and get things done when we did Black Advocacy Day last year and we was missing you this year, for real. All um, right. Just before uh, uh, Tamika gets into the detailed questions with you, uh, how's that transition been for you uh, the last few, uh, I guess the last month or so? Yeah, so, almost two months. Yeah. Um, the the 29th uh so in seven days and one week it'll be two months um it has been like um to take rocket off. yeah <laughs> it's been like um fire hose of information yeah. right um but um we holding it down we doing our part we're um changing some lives we're holding some people accountable Happy to hear that too. Yeah, we're we've we've really been able to um you know adjust. It it's been a hard adjustment because for those that didn't know, I had had surgery, two surgeries on my left foot. And the year before, of course, I broke my ankle. So my whole gait and ability to walk was a challenge. So that's a lot alone because the courthouse and the complexes, it's a lot of walking yeah. to be able to do that. I just want to add, I'm going to interrupt. This is the funny, I was watching, you have been kind of your own boss doing your own schedule. How is that eight to five? You like being there at uh, 30, 7, 30 to nine <laughs> uh, in the beginning, easily seven to nine in probably my first month because I was learning and, you know, wanting to, you know, really get a grip on everything that was going on. So that was different because I'm accustomed to, you know, I'm a multitasker. So I could have committee on and doing three other things and talking with somebody and reading some stuff, you know. So it's different because now I'm sitting in the seat and I got to sit in the seat. I got to read the information. And so um, that was interesting. You know, um, I'm also a person, 
you know, I might have went to my mama house to eat and, you know, God rest her soul, or I might have went out to lunch or whatever. Now I take my lunch, you know. <laughs> it's so funny. I remember Wisconsin Voices had these lunch bags. I was like, I don't need one of them. <laughs> I use that dog on lunch bag. Oh my goodness. Every day, especially if I got a big lunch, you know, that I'm taking. So it's been different. Um, but you know, we've adjusted. I mean, this is, you know, a calendar but it was two decades ago, right, that I did every day. I mean, before I ever ran for a state representative, I had like 20 cases a day. You know, I was in the courtroom every day. That don't even include what my employees, my staff lawyers had. So that adjustment has been real. But um, but back to your question about just the transition and how that's been, Um you know, I don't know if people really understand. The governor told me on a Wednesday that he was going to appoint me on a Friday. Um, I was a practicing lawyer, so I had to shut down my law office. But I also was a state senator, so I had to shut down my Senate stuff. And um, all in two days? All in two days. And thank goodness for the weekend. And thank goodness that the swearing in was at four o'clock, because when I tell you I used every bit of that time, I had to, you know, reconcile my trust account. I had to contact my clients. I had to hunt down some folks because I didn't, I wasn't expecting to have to get them in 24 hours. You know what I'm saying? Um, I had to go to the bank in order to do that. The checks had to clear by a certain time in order to bank to be able to close the account because I couldn't have those accounts open as a judge. You know, um, in the Senate office, can I tell you that I had to be like two weeks into being the judge and I'm on the bench and I realized I never went to the Senate office in Madison and packed it up. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh, and Michelle and um, Ravel and Justin was like, we got you. We'll pack it up. But it's one sign that um, I was known for when we did the Pledge of Allegiance that I want, that one of my colleagues gave me because it's what he remembers me by, which is liberty and justice for all. And I want to make sure that I have that in my courtroom. So the transition has been rapid. It was like rapid fire is what I'm trying to tell you. So Wednesday, he told me Friday, he announced it. Monday, I got sworn in. Tuesday, I was in training. Wow. Uh, the following week, I was on the bench. And the following week after that, I was by myself. They threw you right in the mix. Uh, yeah. 414. I had a caseload going in the door. Um, the case I was placed in misdemeanor court. So to the point of the caller that asked about specialized, you don't go necessarily into a specialized court at all. They normally, the chief judge, Judge Ashley makes the decision with the um, district court coordinator, I think is the DC. DC so when you go in, you could get anything depending on what where, his, they choose. where he wants you. To Sometimes be. people have been placed in children's court, but in children's court, you get what is equivalent to misdemeanor cases and felony cases when you go in. You know, and to the person that asked a judge, uh, every judge had to be a judge for the first time at some point. Every judge. You don't, you're not born a judge. You don't, when you are a lawyer, you, excuse me, have to go from being a lawyer to being a judge. The issue is, is that when you've practiced, you know how cases go. So honestly, you know, when I was put in misdemeanor court, I was like, yes, because for me, it's where I started, right? And even though I was doing misdemeanors, felonies, I was doing personal injury, so civil, family, you know, anyway, a variety. As an attorney, um, going back to misdemeanor, I don't know what to say, but it's like riding a bike in a way. It just clicked, right? And so um, I've been able to hit the ground running and understand, you know, and of course, you know, I've had to figure things out. But one of the things that I've done is look at my cases um, you know, far enough out so that I can say, okay, now what is this? Mm, I don't understand this, that I can print that stuff off and then I can go to one of my colleagues and say, okay, this is what, and read it, know what I want to do and say, this is what I'm thinking. You know, what do you think? Am I on the right path? So you kind of, sometimes you have to collaborate to, oh, most to, to, un- most to get the understanding. Most definitely. You have to research, you know, because to your point, I mean, I'm in my courtroom. It's my courtroom, right? I run that, right? You know, um, but what comes before me, I have to make the decision. So if I don't know, I have to research. If I have to write a decision, I got to write it. There isn't somebody to write it. There isn't somebody to research it. There isn't any of those things. Okay, we got a caller. Um, Anybody who would like to talk to 
the Honorable Judge Alina Taylor, 414 ER twice. 444-5250. Go ahead, call it. Yes. The Honorable. Oh, yes. Go ahead, Black woman. That's what I'm talking about. Love your mind. Love your fight. Love your spirit. And I'm loving that you kicking out that information of how you are, who you are, and what you got, your stat, what you bring to the table. Thank, uh, you. Thank you, my brother. Slap. Thank you. Let me slap the table two more times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did it for you. I did it for you. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm talking right now. I don't care if people be talking. I'm talking. Let me talk. I'm talking. Yeah. And if they don't like what I'm saying, too bad. <laughs> and if they do, they like what I'm saying here. And if you don't know anything about it, just listen, ask, and inquire. Because that lady got that intelligence. That lady got that information. That lady got that, hey, been there. That lady got that, uh, and And let me tell some other things. But I'm going to be quiet. Find it out for yourself. Thank you, Judge. Now that you, uh, and one more thing I got to ask now that you got, you know, shot up and you in a different realm of uh, intellect and business <laughs> and, and socialization. Can you still come around and hang by the dumpster with the regular, like, you know, us up that we, you know, or now that we got to know, the okay, dumpster. we can't, we can't be in the same picture with her. We just got to wave at you behind the cameraman. And you silly. <laughs> We don't never want to mess up your no. You know you we, silly. We, hey, so let me say, let me answer. You call the people. You call them the Rockwellers when you need us. I'll fight it at. We stay in the alleys. We stay in the in the in the. Well, let me answer you, Rockwaller. Let me answer you. So first of all, <laughs> you know one would argue that I think I'm a poodle with a pit bull mentality and a Rockwaller bite, but um, I'll say this to you: Yes, sir. I still go in the community. Yes, sir. I still take pictures with people. Matter of fact, the community has come to visit my courtroom. If 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 somebody don't come every week, it's shocking. Mm. OK, I can tell you one guy came. I got a sweatshirt on today um, and the guy came with a sweatsh excuse me, with a sweatshirt on with a picture from the top of the chest, like under your chin, all the way down to your stomach. Of me and him. <laughs> oh. Okay. Palm a picture in the base, community base. with the front and the back with the picture on. The DA said, in 18 years, I ain't never seen this. <laughs> so usually people come into court and they, they're supporting like either the defendant or the victim or, right. you know, the. They ain't uh, coming to support the judge. <laughs> you don't see big judge, you know, judge pictures. We right. got another caller. Caller? Hi. Go ahead. Hi. Hi, Lena. Hi. This is Sister D. You sing that. Well, hello. Oh, you know, Lena, you used to do your little walk. You did your walk, you're riding on your bike and everything. Last time we, we always see each other everywhere. And sometimes you're like, you knock at the door. It's Lena. Oh, I'm so thirsty. She can't wash in my house. I need some water. She goes, Lena, it's not refrigerated. She get it from the refrigerated. She said, who? I mean, it, it, it's no problem. She's coming to get anything she wants. That's the type of person we love. Oh. Anything she wants, she can have it right here at 38. No, don't be Don't tell you the dress because everybody be knocking on the door. Right, well, one thing that this over said, he beats it. Or, or pass out flies, but she might drop some flies out at my house. Well, you know what? I definitely got some cards made already for the reelection for the uh, reelection okay. to put me keep me on the bench. It's not until this time in 2025, but it's no need for us to wait for people to know so that we can spread those um, spread those uh, cards out. I'm trying to let yeah. this election that's going on right now get passed, and as soon as this okay. judicial election is passed. I'll be yeah. distributing those cards so that people know uh, the election mm -hmm. will be in a February, April cycle. Okay. Well, now, now, you know, you, you, know, you know, I had to be up here, you know, to walk and things like that. But I will be up in those offices to be on the phone, voting, you know, very active in the voting situation. Okay. So I will be very active and I'm trying to pull more, like at the church, 
young and you know what I will do that. I love and at the remember we were at the uh union station down there. Okay. I don't remember, but what I will tell you is this every vote matters, every phone yes, call yes. matters, every person okay. talking to people and reminding them the vote matters. Yes, and so keep yes. doing that kind of work and I appreciate all your love. Uh let's uh take our caller first and then we will go into where to vote and the early voting times and places. Go ahead, caller. Oh, nope, there's nothing. So um, early voting has started and it started on March 19th and it goes through the 30th. Um, it is open today until five o'clock at most places. Um, Zeidler Building, the Capitol Drive Voting Center. Remember, that's right on the corner of 60th and Capitol. And um, the Blackie Library. And those, and those locations are also open this weekend from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then on Sunday from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Those are those three locations. Um, with uh, Washington Park, Tippecanoe um, Library, I mean, Washington Park Library, Tippecanoe Library, and Good Hope Library, they're open today until 5, and then Saturday from 10 to 2. Um, we really, really, really want you to go out and vote. If you cannot make it by the 30th, remember that you can vote on Election Day. Okay, we have a caller. Caller, go ahead. Uh, yes, I just want to say good afternoon to you, Action Wisconsin, and thank you, young lady, for being there. I just want to give a shout out. I just want to give a shout out to uh, my former senator, Senator Taylor, that's a judge now. And uh, Senator uh, George Senator Taylor, are you still there? I am. It's so good to hear you. It's old JT. Don't get mad. I know JT. I know. <laughs> but I just want to say thank you so very much for your courage, for your tenacity, and how you be for the community. Like, I don't know, forever. I'm going to make it quick, okay? I'm going to make it quick. I respect. Uh, uh, Judge Taylor, uh, has there been any difference as far as you've been taking care of the community when you were a senator? I know it's kind of like adolescent, right? But I'm just going to ask you anyway. Have there been any difference since you've been a senator? that you've been a judge watching out for the community. Yes, it's a big difference. Um, you know, people are often accustomed to calling me to ask me uh, for advice, direction, uh, if I can represent them. You know, well, what about in this situation? I, I can't do those things anymore. Uh, and so the most I can do is refer somebody to an attorney. So that's been hard for people because people are very accustomed to that. And then it's even more difficult because, um, they may not be able to know someone that they can call to get that kind of advice from. So that's been very different. But outside of having um, those kind of issues, having a heart for the people is something that still exists. And it shows in another way because I have a heart for this community and for people to be able to feel safe and to feel um, that justice happens fairly and impartially. And so I'm excited to be able to be the administer of justice uh, in Branch 41. Thank you. Um, Senator, to go back to um, what someone asked about the... The, the buildings. So yes. the buildings are owned by the city of Milwaukee. I'm sorry. I said Senator. You I did mean, not yes. answer. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. You know, you, you know what? It's, it's, been right. two, it's been 20 years of what I call it. Give us a little Listen, bit of... Chief lead. Judge called me Senator one day. He, 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 he said, don't think like, we've been good at but, but um, I had a quick question on that same note. Yeah. Uh -huh. When a president is, you know, you say former president. Right. You can say, yeah, I can former senator. No, it's not out of line to say that or to say honorable because in both situations right. it's right. honorable. Or it's, um, a, it's the, the one that you see as most prestigious, I guess. So, um, well, in the end, now I need people to know that I'm Judge Lena Taylor in Branch 41. Then you know, it's all stuff. You know what? It's all fast stuff. No, my daughter's watching on YouTube. She got on a city sweatshirt. Thank oh, you, Lord. Lord. <laughs> so Michelle to come in and told her to kick off her Senate stuff. She didn't lie. She didn't lie. I put this 
sweatshirt on and knew I was coming to this interview. I said, somebody going to say something. I knew it was going to be our. <laughs> but we want to make sure we answer this question. Let's answer the question. The properties are owned by the city of Milwaukee. So the city of Milwaukee is a landlord. So, for example, no matter who a tenant is, they're still the landlord. Right. They're still the person who the contract has to be with, so on and so forth. They're responsible for, you know, so much that makes up the building. When there isn't a school in that building, you know, the city has the obligation to determine who gets to use the building. It's not the school district. Well, we asked so the city people, to give us one of those buildings for well, Wisconsin Voices. Go there's ahead. there's <laughs> been a whole bunch. There's... Uh, well, no, well, we don't uh, have time. We got time. Well, hey, sorry, honey, uh, it, your, it looks like... I am so sorry. We just, um, we have less than 30 seconds about to... Um, wrap this up see you come in and people want to talk they want to ask what thank you for having me i hope you will um try to at least come visit us at least once a month i would love to come back and talk about lena and the law and help you to understand how you oh now it's lena like the law like give me the session lena and the law go let's see how we get up out of here Expressed on this show do not reflect that of the staff and management of WNOV and W293CX 106.5 FM Courier Communications Milwaukee, but are the sole comments of the host and guest of this particular show. The views and opinions expressed in this program do not reflect those of Wisconsin Voices. Views and opinions expressed by hosts and guests are their own, and their appearance on the program do not imply any endorsement or representation by Wisconsin Voice. Thank you for listening to Be a Voice with Wisconsin Voice. Be a 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 voice. Visit WisconsinVoices.org. Visit WisconsinVoices.org. Visit WisconsinVoices.org. And learn more on how to be a voice with Wisconsin Voices.